are you? With under 48 hours left for the transfer window to close, Damn. with the demand of a centre-back growing stronger, the question every Newcastle fan is asking is, who are we gonna sign? So today we will get the latest on the defensive development, discuss the intriguing details behind the Mark Guayhi deal, find out about Newcastle's controversial potential sell. Plus, we'll also discuss the Sandro Tonali masterclass in Newcastle United's 4-3 penalty victory against Nottingham Forest. Let's go! The first thing we learned was his back. Sandro Tonali's comeback after a 10-month absence was nothing short of a masterclass, showcasing his undeniable quality on the pitch. His performance was marked by relentless energy and precision. He ran harder and faster than anyone else and barely misplaced a pass, reaffirming his status as a top-class midfielder. From the moment Tonali stepped onto the field, he made an immediate impact, setting up the opening goal within just 10 seconds. His involvement in the build-up to Joe Willock's goal was crucial, and he nearly doubled Newcastle's lead shortly after, facing a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with an expected goals value of 0 0.46, only to be thwarted by a leg from the Forest goalkeeper. His energy and drive made him the standout player in the first half, and his underrated pace, evident from his status as the fastest player in the Champions League last season, was on full display. Tonali's first half statistics were impressive. One shot, 81% passing accuracy from 27 attempts, 5 passes into the final third, 31 touches, and a 1 foul. In possession, he consistently sought to progress play and keep Newcastle moving forward. Sean Longstaff encapsulated Tonali's importance, stating, He's a massive player for us. You can see his quality and calmness. As the best player in the first half, Tonali demonstrated his ability to link up effectively with teammates most frequently connecting with Miguel Almiron and Kieran Trippier as they built attacks down the right flank as shown in the passing network. His stellar return not only bolstered Newcastle's performance, but also highlighted his crucial role in the team's ambitions moving forward. Standing at the city ground, grasping an Italian flag and serenaded by Newcastle fans, Tonali appeared genuinely moved. Though not typically overt with his emotions, the blend of contentment and relief was evident on his face. After 309 long days away from competitive football due to a betting ban, he was finally back doing what he loves. Eddie Howe also expressed his satisfaction with Tonali's performance, noting the lovely passages of play he was involved in. The manager praised his fitness levels, especially considering the lengthy layoff, and highlighted the emotional connection between Tonali and the supporters. Speaking after the game, Eddie Howe said, I thought he did well. He was involved in some lovely little passages of play. I thought he did well fitness-wise considering the lack of match action he's had. I think he can be really pleased with the reception he got from the Newcastle supporters at the end. You could see the amount of Italian flags in the crowd, that embrace with the supporters. A lot of emotion coming out from Sandro's side, and of course from the supporters' side back. That connection is so important for any player, and he will be hugely boosted by that. But a great day for him, a great return, and a positive result. So, Tonali's return marked a significant moment not just for him, but for the team as well. As Newcastle progressed in the Carabao Cup, the 24-year-old's contributions will be vital as they aim for success this season. With his skill set and determination, it's evident that Sandro Tonali is back and ready to make his mark once again. That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Same topic of comebacks, Jolinton's comeback performance was a significant improvement over his sluggish display against Bournemouth. Despite his tendency to give the ball away and an unfortunate missed penalty, he managed to help his side secure a positive result, showcasing his resilience. With a commendable 7.3 match rating, Jolinton recorded 84 touches and maintained an impressive 89% passing accuracy. He delivered one key pass, completed three out of four accurate long balls, one shot on target, two out of two successful dribbles, six ground duels won, three aerial duels won. More impressively, defensively, Jolinton stood out by making five clearances, blocking one shot, and contributing with three interceptions and three tackles. Notably, he was not dribbled past during the match, underlining his commitment to both attacking and defensive duties. 
Miguel Almiron having a 7.3 match rating also made a mark, looking sharp in the first half. He played a crucial role in the opening goal and subsequently saw a shot saved, while also contributing defensively to the team's efforts with two clearances, one interception and three tackles. However, not all comebacks were positive. Joe Willock's bittersweet return was marked by a stunning goal just 29 seconds into the match, but he was forced to exit the game due to injury after just 15 minutes. This unfortunate turn of events served as a reminder of the fragility of player fitness, even amidst individual triumphs. Speaking on Willock's injury, Eddie Howe said, It's a huge blow for him and for us. We just hope it's not serious. It doesn't look good. He has a pain in his thigh. Then moving on to some transfer developments. <laughs> So Newcastle United are reportedly exploring a potential deal for RB Leipzig defender Mohamed Simakan, as reported by Sky Germany journalist Florian Plettenberg. This comes amid a quiet summer for the Magpies, who have secured four points from their opening two Premier League matches but have yet to make a significant signing. Eddie Howe's side has primarily focused on acquiring Crystal Palace star Mark Guehi, but they have struggled to reach an agreement with the Eagles. Have are you serious? <laughs> With the transfer deadline fast approaching on Friday, Newcastle find themselves in a challenging position, needing to decide whether to continue pursuing Guehi or to shift their focus to alternative targets. Crystal Palace's high asking price for Guehi, believed to be around 65 to 70 million pounds, is partly due to the fact that Chelsea are entitled to 20% of the fee following a sell-on clause included in the deal when Guehi transferred to Palace. This complicates negotiations for Newcastle who are under pressure to finalize a defensive signing. In light of these challenges, Plettenberg's report indicates that Newcastle are now considering Simakan as a viable alternative. The 24-year-old French defender is not only versatile, capable of playing both centre-back and right-back, but also has garnered interest from other clubs, including Barcelona, Liverpool and teams in Saudi Arabia. Plettenberg noted on X.com that Leipzig is open to negotiations for Simakan, but only for suitable offers. The defender has three years remaining on his contract with the Bundesliga club, having made 122 appearances since joining from Strasbourg in 2021. Plettenberg has also went on to say that RB Leipzig are now exploring a deal to sign Antonio Silva, as Mohamed Simakan could leave the club in the next 48 hours. Simakan is known for his aggressive front foot defending. He thrives in one-on-one -on -one duels, showcasing intense defensive skills that fit well within RB Leipzig's high-pressing system. His pace and physicality enable Leipzig to maintain an aggressive high line, a key component of the Red Bull football philosophy. In addition to his defensive capabilities, Simakan is adept in possession. He often carries the ball forward, contributing to attacking plays whether deployed in the centre or on the right side of defence. This ability provides manager Eddie Howe with valuable tactical flexibility, allowing for varied game plans, depending on the opponent. Throughout his senior career, Simakan has played for two clubs, although he has yet to make his debut for the senior French national team. Simakan's contributions at RB Leipzig have been significant, with him scoring seven goals and providing 13 assists over 122 appearances, highlighting his ability to influence games beyond just defensive duties. Overall, Simakan's blend of defensive prowess versatility and ability to contribute to the attack makes him a compelling target for Newcastle United as they look to strengthen their squad. The clock is ticking and the club must act swiftly to secure a new defender. They have also shown interest in Chelsea's Axel de Sarsi, though no serious moves have yet been made for the 26-year-old. If Newcastle ultimately miss out on Guehi, it could reflect poorly on the club, especially given the length of time they have been in negotiations. The situation underscores the urgency for Newcastle to either finalise a deal for Guehi or pivot decisively towards Simakan or another alternative before the transfer window closes. Then in another transfer development, according to Ben Jacobs, there are indications that Miguel Almiron may be set to join Fulham in a late window move as the transfer deadline approaches this week. Fulham is among the clubs reportedly considering an approach for the Paraguayan winger, who could be available for around £15 million a figure previously quoted to Charlotte FC, who had an offer rejected by Newcastle. Newcastle manager Eddie Howe is a strong supporter of Almiron and has expressed a desire to retain him in the squad. However, if sporting director Paul Mitchell decides to facilitate a transfer, 
it may be challenging for how to block the move. Earlier this summer, there was interest from Saudi Pro League clubs in Almiron, but Newcastle did not receive any acceptable offers. Selling Almiron could create space in the squad for Newcastle to pursue a new winger, but time is running out as the transfer window nears its closure. Newcastle has shown interest in Juventus winger Federico Chiesa, although reports suggest he is on his way to Liverpool for a fee of approximately £13 million. Nah, Come on, man. This potential loss of Almiron could push Newcastle to act quickly in the market to secure a replacement before the deadline. As the situation develops, the coming days will be crucial for both Almiron's future and Newcastle's efforts to strengthen their attacking options. Then in other news, Kieran Trippier has retired from international football after having won 54 England caps and appeared in four major tournaments. And then finally, if you would want to know why Sandro Tonali's return is scarier than you think, click the video link on screen now.